Hi, my name is Frank Rye from publicspace.net, and today I'm going to show you how to best approach very large file renaming jobs. A better file rename is optimized for the most common use cases. The same settings that will give you an optimal user experience when you're doing a rename of 100 or so image files from your camera are not necessarily appropriate for doing much larger rename jobs, like making everything on an external hard drive accessible from Windows machines. One key difference is that in a lot of typical use cases, metadata is very important to create meaningful file names for media files, such as photos, music, or videos. For your typical large rename job, however, these settings create a lot of extra work that will make a better file rename very slow and unresponsive. So very often for large rename jobs, the first step is to switch off the automatic retrieval of all metadata. You can do this by unticking this checkbox in the preferences of the application. Before you do this, make sure that you really do not need the metadata to perform the rename. The metadata is only required when you sort using the EXIF digital shooting date, use tag-based renaming or image dimensions. Switching off this option means that the better finder rename no longer needs to read in the entire files, but it can just read in the file names. This can make a dramatic difference if you are working with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files or when you are on a slow or remote network drive. As a general rule, you should probably never do a rename on files that you don't have backed up somewhere. This is of course especially true if you work with huge file collections. They could be left in a mess if you do something wrong. In practice, of course, I realize that it can be difficult to make a complete backup, especially if you are working with large file collections, where backing up all that data takes up a lot of extra storage space and a lot of extra time neither of which you might have. But remember that if you decide to live dangerously, you might just get burned. Typically, with this type of large rename job, you only actually want to change the names of a very small percentage of the files in your collection. In our example, where we are sanitizing the Mac file names for Windows, we only need to change the file names that contain problematic characters. The standard previewed feature of a better finder rename is designed to show you exactly what the new file names will look like after the rename, so that you don't have any nasty surprises, and you can spot mistakes straight away. For very large rename jobs, however, it can be very difficult to check all the names manually. And as I mentioned, you may only change one out of every thousand file names, so it's very difficult to make sure that everything is correct. Also in this type of situation, it can be useful to have a record of exactly what file name changes were performed. This is where another, somewhat hidden feature of a better finder rename can come in very handy. Once you have set up your renaming actions, instead of performing the rename straight away, I would recommend going to File, Save File List option, choose the preview, and tick the checkbox so that only name changes that are actually going to be performed are recorded. As you can see, the result of this is a plain text file that contains only the name changes that will actually be performed. This will give you a permanent record of what will be done. This is also a nice place for you to double check that you don't have any name changes that would be inappropriate. Depending on how many files you're renaming, this will obviously take a while. It is only logical that if renaming 100 files takes one second, renaming 1 million files will take 10,000 times longer. And that's not even taking into account scalability problems, such as running out of fast memory, I.O. bandwidth, and so on. A better final rename can, under perfect conditions, rename 1 million files in a single go. But you need to be aware of the fact that the more files that you rename at the same time, the more you're pushing your max limits, and the more a single problem will impact your entire renaming job. I would personally recommend that if at all possible, you use renaming batches of no more than 50 to 100,000 files. This gives you the advantage that the performance and the resources of your Mac are not strained too much and will result in shorter, more interactive runtimes. It also makes it much easier to figure out the source of a problem if one does indeed occur. It might be a single locked file, a file system driver bug that takes exception with the name of one particular file, etc. If you proceed in smaller batches, you can isolate this problem and work around it. It also avoids you the disappointment of letting the renaming job work through the entire night, only to get up in the morning and to see that it stopped after the first 10,000 files and that there are another 990,000 left. 
Should you run into a problem, one easy way of finding out which file might be triggering the problem is to take the entire batch, divide it into two roughly equal halves, and then rename each half separately. The problematic file will trigger the bug in only one half, but not the other. So you can then repeat the process on that half, divide it into equal halves, rerun the batch job, etc., until you find your offending file. In this video, I have concentrated on the particular issues that you might encounter when performing large rename jobs. But you should also check out last week's video about how to avoid renaming problems on macOS in general. Again, the more files you rename, the more likely you are to run into absolutely every edge case in existence, and the more it pays to avoid potential pitfalls. In that video, I'm diving deeper into file name conventions, illegal characters, text encoding issues, third-party drivers, network attached storage, sync services, and much else besides. So see you there. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.